Good morning and welcome. We've got a couple more minutes until our official start time for Coffee with the Birds, but I want to give uh, a welcome to those of you online. We're, we've been going live for a little bit. We're just turning on the audio now. Our room uh, is getting uh, filled with people here in person, and uh, I hope that uh, we've got some good viewership online as well. So we'll take just a couple minutes, enjoy the birds at the feeder, and uh, we'll be starting the uh, program here in just a couple minutes. So we already got a question here, so we'll just kind of even start easing into this. And um, when I repeat myself, it's because I had myself on mute, and so now I'm actually being heard online again. We had a question about what's in feeder number four, and um, feeder number four is being fed upon by goldfinches on the right side and a hairy woodpecker on the left, and it has sunflower chips in it, just straight up sunflower chips. So it's the hearts of the black oil sunflower seed, and they're uh, chipped just a little bit. So they're not all whole sunflower seeds. The goldfinches really have been loving it. I have not seen the woodpeckers on it uh, until now. So, But that doesn't surprise me either. There's a chickadee on uh, number five eating the suet. Can you hear me online all right, Rick? I don't know if you're even able to. Or if... I could. I muted you, though, so it wouldn't keep back until I turned the AC on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
and uh, he's doing an excellent job. Thank you so much uh, to you for your uh, volunteering to do this and help us out with this uh, program. So what is Coffee with the Birds? Um, those of you, if you're a first timer online, give a shout out to us online. Any first timers here to the program at all, whether online or in person, first timer. Oh, wow, excellent, very special welcome to you. This is wonderful. We've got first timers all around first timers. Um, is there a first timer who, who visited online last year for the first time and now is here in person? Excellent, welcome. Great, great, nice to see a good mix. And who out there has done this in person before and did it online last year before and now is here again? Here we've got everybody represented. Thank you, that's, that's awesome. So those of you out there too, let us know if you participated last year, if this is your first time um, participating in Coffee with the Birds. But basically what this is, and you can see it up on the screen here too, those of you in person and online, um, We've got a feeder watching session from now till about 10.30, 10.20, uh, 10.30. And then after that, we've got a tidbit presentation. Those of you online, we'll cut the live stream and you can watch the video that goes live at, it goes live at 10.15. Um, so then you can watch it online. Um, it is linked in the Coffee with the Birds information page. Um, and so you can find it there. We can also possibly put it in the chat uh, if it's possible, but if, if not, <laughs> go to the, Google search Coffee with the Birds, Ottawa County Parks. You'll come up with uh, our, our webpage and you can find the video, which is the photo contest winners photo stories. So all of the winners were interviewed about their stories of uh, taking the photos. And uh, that will be online uh, to view uh, for your tidbit presentation. Those of you in person will be doing that presentation in the great room once this feeder session is done. Then we have another feeder watching session at 11.10. That's in person only. And let's get through this so that we can just watch the birds. Um, what is coffee with the birds? We've got some new people here, new people online. This is an informal time to enjoy several things. First of all, coffee. Second of all, pastries. Everybody get coffee and pastries, okay? And birds. Okay, we're going to enjoy the birds at the feeder. We've got a downy woodpecker there on number 10 at the suet. Um, that's about the only bird. Oh, no, there's goldfinches. Goldfinches on number nine. Um, we're going to enjoy the birds, and we're going to enjoy community, whether you be in person here and in community with us here, eye to eye, or online. That is our extended community as well. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to enjoy some fellowship together over some things that we all enjoy. Hopefully we all enjoy um, having a, a drink together with donuts and birds. Um, there'll be questions um, from the audience, especially live here is what we're going to be able to do. I'll repeat questions that I hear so that those of you online can hear it too. But questions, bird stories, um, curiosities that you have, recent bird sightings, things like that, anything. Bird identification questions about the birds we're seeing up here, how to feed birds. Anything bird related is kind of Fair game, and we're just going to talk. Um, and then, like I said, the birding tidbit presentation, and uh, that'll be a little later. But I want to thank our sponsors, and that is Friends of Ottawa County Parks, um, who has sponsored with much of the uh, goodies that you have that you're eating, especially the hot drinks. Um, uh, Kestrel Imagery, and that others may know, that's Rick Veldman and um, his expertise. Um, visit those websites there. Uh, to learn more about what he does, but that others may know documents um, uh, the uh, history of family. Uh, though he, he interviews people in your family for posterity um, about their lives and things and puts it in video form. So if you're interested in something like that, um, he's the person to go to That's that others may know. And also a Washtenong Islands Audubon Society has made a nice donation to help with uh, feeding the birds here at the Nature Center. But last and not least, cheers to all of you Mug Club members. We have already sold nearly 50, if not 50, of our 100 available mugs, so get yours today. Um, thank you for the uh, Coffee with the birds, birds Mug Club members. If you have your mug, raise your mug, just don't spill your coffee. Um, whether at home or in person, 
whether whether former or current, <laughs> raise your mugs. Thank you for your support. For $25, you can get one of these mugs and you can help support this program and feeding the birds at the Nature Center and get a few perks along the way. And uh, we'll talk more about this mug later. Um, that uh, photographer may just be in this room. So, <laughs> and let's watch the birds at the feeder. We've already been doing that a, a bit, but let's do that more. Um, can you hear me all right, even if I turn away from the mic? Is that? Yeah. Okay. All right. First of all, let's get out of the way. What's, what's at the feeders right now? We've got a house finch with junk. Oh, the junkos just flew. House finch was on number eight. Now it's in the branches behind. There's a tufted titmouse on one. It'll be there for a second and gone. There's another one on number one. It was waiting to come in. They love the peanuts that I put in the tray feeder, in the platform feeder. Um, so we've got a chickadee on number seven and goldfinches on number nine and number seven. The goldfinches have also been on number four, lots of them. We've had downy woodpecker, hairy woodpecker, red-breasted nuthatch, white-breasted nuthatch, black-capped chickadee. All of these we've seen so far today. The activity has slowed down a little bit from what it was actually initially when people were coming into the room. But I would like to ask if there is anybody here who has a question, curiosity, anything that you see out here that you have questions about. Um, this is the time we open up the floor to have fun discussion. And, uh, did you take down the net in front of the window? Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. So the question is, did we take down the net? We normally have a uh, net in front of the window uh, to shield it from, from the birds. With the camera equipment, we can't focus on the feeders because it catches the net. And so we have to take that down for the cameras. Um, and Rick and I were out there washing windows this morning, too. So. <laughs> Does the wind affect the birds? Does the wind affect the birds is the question. Absolutely, it does. Um, actually, as a birder, I think some of you out uh, in the audience here and out there online can probably second this, but I would rather have a bit of a rainy day and watch birds than a windy day. Um, and that's because... In the strong winds, they typically hunker down and they don't, they're not active. So, are you good? Yeah, I'm just seeing what we got. Okay, you can hear all right in there? I haven't turned down. Okay, okay. Just checking in with Kelly from the other room. Um, but uh, the wind at the feeders, we're still getting a lot of traffic, and that's probably because it's fairly uh, protected in here, I say, as the wind swirls through. Uh-oh, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> We're fairly protected here, and then a tree falls, you know. Um, so, but as wind increases, the bird activity decreases. Um, rainy weather actually can be good for birds because if it's, especially if it's that light rain, that'll bring them out of the canopy and down lower in the forest and so you can see them better. Um, but uh, wind is the enemy of the birds except for when, you know, it's a tailwind and they're migrating. They like that. But yeah, today the winds are quite strong, so um, that, that will definitely uh, impact them. Good question. Yeah, Rick Pedler, you got a question. And I think most people here probably know, you know, the, the downy's got the three little black marks on the outer tail, which yep. you can see here. I said, something, I, I don't see hairies too much where I live. I see a lot of downies. But I've read that, that the, the collar mark on the hairy comes out more. Yes. Than you can, and, and I have not, not done that in the way. I don't see hairies that much. I've already noticed it here. I know from the element came up. You got it. Hurt, and that's... Hurt. Yep, and that's a marking that I've not that I've not made note of myself a whole lot until recently. Also, and uh, so what Rick was mentioning is the difference between downy and hairy woodpecker. It's one of the most familiar identif identification conundrums for any bird feeder watcher, and and um, there are several markings that tell them apart. But the the one that I don't think I've ever mentioned here 
and that kind of came to light to me that I hadn't really noticed before, and Rick was saying the same thing, is that there's a black collar mark that comes further around toward the breast and neck of the bird on a hairy woodpecker than on a downy woodpecker. So see if you can notice that when um, the birds, uh, w when we get a downy or hairy woodpecker in here, there's a collar mark that comes around. There's a downy, downy on number uh, 10, and a hairy is on the tree back there. And, and look for that, that black collar, especially as they come in. You can see the downy. You don't see a collar coming around the neck there at all. So, But downy and wood, hairy woodpecker um, have very subtle differences. Otherwise, they look almost exactly the same. Uh, the hairy woodpecker is two inches larger. Oh, we've got a red-breasted nuthatch on seven. It's just flying off there. Um, um, they're, they're two inches, the downy woodpeckers are two inches smaller than the hairy. So when they're next to each other, it's very obvious. Um, oh, and there, you can see the collar coming around the neck. Did you see that? Very good. Thank you for bringing that up, Rick. That, that actually was something, I don't know how I missed that for so long too. It's not in the books that I've seen. Um, but I heard it mentioned somewhere in an online pr uh, program or something. I can't remember where. So there's the downy again. You see the, the, the size difference. Um, but yeah, downy and hairy woodpecker. It's the size of the beak. It's the size of the okay, size of the bird, size of the beak, larger beak, hairy woodpecker. Um, also, the outer tail feathers are white on the, on the tail. You can see on this downy woodpecker, the whiter, uh, white outer tail feathers. But there's little flecks of black in the outer tail feathers on a downy woodpecker. On a that you very often cannot see. Yes, if you have your binoculars on, and even you can see it a little bit with your bare eyes here, if you if you concentrate enough. <laughs> There's little black flecks on the outer white tail feathers there. Um, the hairy woodpecker is all stark white on those white outer tail feathers. So, and then they're different in the calls too. We've got a bunch of goldfinches on number four. Tufted titmouse to the right of number four there, coming down to number one. He likes the number one feeder. How are you doing back there, Rick? Well, I've got cameras on one and five, but he's still a bird. So. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bird on one. There's a bird on one. The tufted titmouse just came in. The downy has been sticking on number 10 for quite a bit. And then uh, number four has been real busy with the uh, goldfinches. Apologies to those of you online if I'm calling out birds that aren't in the cameras. We've got more, more feeders than what Rick has cameras or the ability to switch the cameras to the feeders. So, so thank you for your patience with that. He's doing a great job. So lots of squirrels on the ground out here too. And it's time for me to take a sip of my coffee. That was a couple of woodpeckers just flew by there. So the other day I was in the wildlife den here, um, and all of a sudden uh, the birds scattered, and a little blue-gray colored hawk came flying in and scared them all, did a loop around, and the chickadee that it was chasing, unfortunately, the only thing that wasn't protected was the door over here. He hit the, he hit the door, went to the ground, stunned, and before he could gain his senses, that Cooper's hawk, or oh. Cooper, it was a sharp shinned hawk actually, came around, grabbed him, and flew off right in front of me. They gotta have their bird food too. So there's a the red breasted nuthatch on number five. We have been having a lot of red-breasted nuthatches this year. Uh, good activity for red-breasted nuthatches at our feeders. Last year it was hit or miss. We'd usually get them once in an hour, but now we're getting them regular. Anybody else in the audience here or online been seeing red-breasted nuthatches? Good. It's a there's a bumper crop of red-breasted nuthatches this year. So a lot of finches too. Good. Um, anybody else have a lot of finches out there right now? Goldfinches in particular. Anybody have any finches other than goldfinches? House finches. Okay, yep, house finches. 
Anybody pine siskin or red poles online or in person here, comment and let us know what you're seeing. I haven't been hearing reports of finches, um, but uh, up on the screen here, I've got a few of the finches to look out for. So um, we've got goldfinches, and they're here every year, year round. Um, some years we get more goldfinches than others, but uh, others to look for are pine siskin, um, evening grosbeak, which last year we had uh, actually an invasion of evening grosbeaks in November. Uh, haven't had that this year. That's a rare thing to see. Um, we've had white wing and red crossbills in the area before and common red pole. The two on this page, that uh, the, the screen, that would be most likely to show up would be the common red pole and the pine siskin. So watch your finch feeders. They're about the same size or even a little bit smaller than goldfinches. Um, if you get a really streaky goldfinch with yellow in the wings, that's a pine siskin. If you get a goldfinch with a re little red cap and a rosy breast with a little yellow beak, that is a red pole. So, yeah, we'd be curious to know if anybody's seeing them out there. Jeff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we got Jeff Slaughter here. He's he's mentioning he was up north yesterday and was hearing pine siskins. Um, they they do become a little more common as you go further north. And I don't doubt that there are some around here even, um, but I have not run into large numbers of them yet. So or any at the feeders, even though we've got tons of goldfinches, like you see on number four over there. Lots of goldfinches. I tell you, they love the, the chips. Sunflower chips. Ah, birds on the ground. We've got dark-eyed junco right here at the very far right end. The gray bird with the white belly. And when they fly, look for flashes of white in the outer tail feathers. Um, they're a wintertime species. They're here only during the winter. They'll, they'll arrive in October and stay until April um, and go north to breed. So this is south for the winter for them. One other species that, that uh, we get at the feeders uh, that, that fits that is the American tree sparrow, but I have not seen them visiting the feeders yet. That number four is really, really rocking with the goldfinches. I'll just tell you what. <laughs> Do you have a camera on four, Rick? Okay, great. <laughs> That's fun to watch. But good, good question. The birds on the ground. Um, there's, there's a couple of juncos back behind number eight in the brush there. They love brush piles and they love to feed on the ground. And that's one thing to keep in mind when you're feeding birds is to put the food where the birds want it. And different birds want food in different locations. The more variety you can add, the better you, you are to feed the birds. So we put stuff on the ground that keeps the, the squirrels at bay because then they, they you know, they're going to be lazy when they have to be, but they're going to be ingenious when they have to be. And when there's no food on the ground, then they're going to get up into your feeder. So I throw some cracked corn and, and other seed on the ground for the squirrels. Um, but also the juncos and the tree sparrows um, and the cardinals like to feed on the ground. The, the morning doves like to feed on the ground. So give it to them where they want it. Um, and then we've got uh, food up in the feeders, too. We've got suet, like in number five and number ten. Um, we've, we've got the tray feeder, number one. And I, I put just a, a thin layer of, of uh, uh, sunflower hearts, uh, thistle, excuse me, <clears throat> thistle, and um, what, uh, what uh, what's that? Peanuts. peanuts. Thank you. <laughs> the main ingredient. Peanuts in uh, number one. They love the peanuts. And oh, that is a favorite, the tit mice in particular. You see them coming constantly to that feeder. Um, so those peanuts go fast, but I, I put out just a limited supply. They don't have an unlimited supply of peanuts. <laughs> got to be smart about it. Um, we've got black oil sunflower seed. and Oh, there's a morning dove. Just came in to the right of number four. Um, that's a good sign that we're actually uh, doing, doing well for our noise level and uh, movement level inside here because they're usually pretty skittish. There's a chickadee on number one. But um, 
What was I? Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> Chickadee is feeding right up here outside the window. You can see he's cracking open the seed. So um, number one feeder, or excuse me, yeah, number one feeder. We went we went over what's in in uh, the the tray feeder or the platform feeder. The number three, our number, we lost our number two marker, which is the back feeders over there. Um, the back feeders are suet on the left, and then uh, uh, sunflower chips on the right. Um, if you go to number three feeder, where there's one goldfinch, that is black oil sunflower seeds, not just the hearts. That's the whole sunflower seed. So what, what that is compared to number four, it's the same thing. But you can see the difference with these goldfinches, how much they love not having to crack open that seed. And it makes less mess underneath your feeder. We're trying to transition to more of that than the, than the whole sunflower because of the amount of mess that we get at the feeders here. Um, and I found um, a, a good place that you can pick up really big bags of the stuff for a, re a reasonable price, and that's De Brine's Seed Company in Zealand. So um, it's, it's on Washington, just east of state. Um, and very great hometown store. Um, I don't know why I didn't go there earlier. Um, but they do, have, you can get 50 pound bags of, of uh, sunflower chips or sunflower hole. Um, like the su uh, sunflower chips are actually the hearts that are ground up a little bit. And you can also get the whole sunflower heart. And you can also get bags of just regular black oil sunflower seed there too. And a whole lot of other big bags of peanuts and things. Yes. Just plain millet? Yeah, I think the only thing they have is 50 pounds. So you've got a lot of millet at home. Oh, great. Yeah. And I tend to like to make my own ground mixes, and millet is, is the ground mix that the Junkos and things like that love. Um, the stuff that you get at the stores with the Milo, they typically don't like the Milo as much. That's, that's junk seed uh, to me. So I like millet cracked corn, and some black oil sunflower seeds for on the ground. Um, that tends to do really, really well. Um, but yeah, De Bruyne, um is great. Uh, they've got a lot of great uh, uh, seed options there, uh, in, including um, really finely ground sunflower chips. So these are sunflower chips here on number four. But if you look at number nine, you can see how that's, the thistle feeder is speckled because I mixed sunflower, or excuse me, Niger seed, which is thistle, and I mixed it with actually sunflower hearts fine ground. And that's actually a good finch food too. So I, I went ahead and mixed that myself, but you can get the fine ground stuff at De Bruyne as well. And uh, moving along, number four, that is sunflower chips. Like I mentioned, the, the uh, goldfinches have been loving it. Number 10 is a new feeder that we had donated to the park. And um, that actually is 100% suet. Um, I got it at De Bruyne because uh, you can get it in the um, cake, in a suet cake. Now, this place has it as 100%, but it's just solid white. It looks like a, a hunk of lard, okay? Just like a hunk of lard. But it's in one of those casings just like uh, the other suet cakes. That's $3.00. But I think that three dollars probably goes further than three cakes, and I'm kind of testing that out. I've been cutting it up into pieces and stuffing it into the little holes there, um, and uh, seeing how the woodpeckers like it, and they like it a lot. So, um, and then I also got this really big chunk for number five. That's that's just a, a really large suet cake, um, and the woodpeckers have been really liking that too. Um, to the right of number ten. What is that? That is number six. It's turned against me. I can't see it. Number six, uh, the little blue cover, that is mealworms, dried mealworms. Um, and that's a special protein treat for the, for the uh, birds. Uh, number seven is a new feeder, and that is sunflower hearts again. I'm trying to feed it in multiple different ways and seeing, I'm kind of, you'll see things will change from time to time, and I'm, I'm experimenting with things. But I like that one because it's got a cage that keeps the, the larger birds out. And the smaller birds can get in and get what they want. Um, and number nine is the mixture of thistle and finely chipped sunflower seeds. And number eight is the same as what's in number three. It's black oil sunflower seed in a squirrel resistant feeder. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. 
I've I've mentioned this before, but you know, there's a, a weight on there, so they get on that little perch and it and it shuts the door, the trap door to the to the uh, feeder port. But the squirrel, if it can get on top of the feeder and hang over, it'll reach down and not trigger that. So you know, it it's squirrel resistant. About anything out there is squirrel resistant only. So that's an overview of the feeder here. And on the ground, I've got a mixture of seed. I actually, they have, uh, at DeBrine, they have their own mixes too. And I grabbed the, what's called the Junko mix. I didn't realize that they have big bags of, of millet too. But they've got a Junko mix and uh, that they mix themselves there. And I put that out here. I added some cracked corn to it. Um, there is cracked corn in it, but I added more. Um, and so that's what's on the ground. That the squirrels are loving and the Junkos are loving too. So... Here comes a squirrel. Watch him over number four. We're going to see. Oh, and he did it. He did it. Uh, wow. On number four, he dropped about, oh, I don't know, six feet out of that branch. I have been meaning to cut that branch, but it has not happened because <laughs> I know he's been doing that. Wow. Oh, man, that titmouse is looking pretty curious. Like, what is that guy doing there? I put stuff on the ground for you, sir. <laughs> or ma'am. <laughs> wow. yeah. Is there another one up there? Oh, he's looking at <laughs> Oh, Did you catch that on film, Rick? He's nodding his head. Yes, he caught that on film. So how timely? I'm like, nothing is squirrel proof. <laughs> Thank you for showing me to be honest about squirrels and your ingeniousness. We'll give you a moment, but then I'm going to have you leave that feeder. Okay? So there's our hairy woodpecker, and look at his collar. You can see the collar coming around. Yeah, yeah, you see it coming, extending from the wing, and it comes out onto the neck a little bit, down around the shoulder. Here's a junco right here, real, real close on the ground. Dark-eyed junco. Shall I tell the squirrel? I'm going to tell the squirrel to leave. <laughs> Actually, Hank, would you crack that door open just a sec? It, it, rather than me scaring all the birds, see if that, that gets him to... Okay, I'll come do my, my duty. <laughs> Out of here. There he goes. Snap my fingers, just like at the kids, you know? Hey. <laughs> oh, but you know what? Without them, we wouldn't be doing as much laughing, right? We love the squirrels, too. We love to hate the squirrels. <laughs> Who had a question? I heard. Oh, yes. I got birds, but nothing touches my mealworms. Really? Are they fresh or are they dried? Dried. Okay. I don't know. It took a while for them really to take to getting in, uh, into that. I don't know why. I have mixed it in with the tray feeder here on number one, too. But they didn't go through it real fast. But it seems like recently they've been going through it faster in this little feeder here. I don't know what triggered them to start eating on it, but I kept at it. I just kept at it. So, yeah, I would have thought that it would have been one of, like putting out candy, but, <laughs> but it, it, uh, it hasn't been the most popular feeder. So, but, uh, yeah, interesting. Keep at it and see once if, if behavior changes. Lynn, you had a question. Yes, yes. So the question is uh, white-throated sparrows. Lynn was seeing some white-throated sparrows under her feeder back in November, but they have since disappeared, and she's asking if they go further south. The, the, the answer is yes and no. So yes, most of them, uh, most of the white-throated sparrows come through here in, in late fall migration, and then by December they're typically gone. 
Um, so October and November is the months that you would see them. And then again, uh, late March into April, um, you'll see them in the spring. But I uh, happened to see one just recently, two days ago, uh, at a feeder. <laughs> I happened to visit, uh, th this is Hank Veldman over here in the corner. That's his dad. Sorry, I'm going to embarrass, and mom is here too. <laughs> Yeah, so he he um he has had a fox sparrow at his feeder, and so I went to go see fox sparrow because I need it for the year. Yes, I still need that for the year. I'm trying to hit 200 for Ottawa County for the year, and uh, missed the fox sparrow, but saw a white-throated sparrow at his feeder and two song sparrows. So those two species they don't typically hang around, but they can in very small numbers at certain places. So. If you lost them, um, they may still be around, but more than likely they continued on. Um, and uh, it's only a few feeders around that may get a white-throated through the winter. Same with white crown sparrows too. So good question, Lynn, thank you. Something about the bird feeders, but is there sometimes grit for small stones in feed too? Is there, the question is, is there sometimes grit or small stones in bird food too? You know. I don't know that it's intentionally added to any of the mixes that I've ever used. However, I used to have a parakeet and you would have to have like the grit in there. So I wouldn't doubt that it would be a helpful thing to offer grit, you know, at the feeders. That's an interesting thing. They have a pink stone that has niger. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, it has grit in it. Yeah, grit. Got it. Okay, so apparently DeBrines has a finch food that has grit mixed into it. Red-breasted nuthatch on number five. You can tell the male and female red-breasted nuthatch apart from each other by the darkness of the cap on the top. So jet black cap, this is same for red-breasted and red-breasted nuthatches. The, the cap on the top is jet black, and I mean jet black, like as black as black can be um, on the males. Whereas the female, like this bird, it's more of a, a grayish, bluish tinge. Do you see that? Yeah. Notice when another one comes, if we can see the male, you'll, you'll notice the difference. It's some of those real subtle things like the, the collar on the, white, on, on the hairy woodpecker, you know, that you just don't notice until they're pointed out to you. But then they become like, oh, wait, I see that now. You know, I just wasn't looking for it. If you don't know what to look for, you miss things. And that's one key to a bird identification is being aware of key identification features of the species you're looking at. Oh, the one on top there? Yep. <laughs> the bright gold goldfinch is apparently the dominant male at the at the number four feeder, is what the comment is. And you can tell the male and female goldfinches apart from each other in the winter because of that brighter yellow, especially on the face. So when you see the bright yellow on the face, that's a male. When you see one that's more just plain dull colored, um, that is actually the the female. And they can they have variations, right? Like um, a male can be brighter or duller, but the the females are really don't have much for for bright yellow at all in them. So I see one on the back side, but their heads are all turned away. They look like mostly males there right now. There's a female on the back that I can see. Here's here's one on seven. The front bird on seven, front and bottom. That's a female right there. You can see basically no bright yellow on it at all. And the one on the left there, too. And then you saw a male just came in. Yeah. Got to check my time. 10.07. We're doing pretty good for time. I like this. I like this. How's everybody doing? A shout out to those of you online. How are you all doing? I won't be able to read it right now. <laughs> we'll have to figure out a way to maybe do that where we can interact with you during the live stream, too. Um, but uh, let us know how you're doing, how, how this is. And... I'll take this time also to ask for your feedback online and in person. If you have things you want to say, 
Um, we love to get that feedback because this is a new adventure for us. And we want to know how to best meet all of your needs um, and all of your, your desires for, for this program. And we can only do that if we hear from you. So if you have comments that you want to make about this program, whether in, li uh, uh, in line, in person or online, right? <laughs> um, please send your comments to the email address, mi, or excuse me, naturecenter at miottawa.org. Um, I also put that in the last, in the last two uh, quick look emails that I sent out. If you look down at the bottom, the email address is on there. I have uh, uh, a segment on there with asking the same thing I just asked you now. So, yes, Rick. We have a comment that they're missing the pastries. You're missing the pastries. I am so sorry. Yes. <sighs> I wish we could beam one over to you. What's your favorite pastries? Put it online. We'll, so, uh, we'll, we'll submit it to the audience here. What are your favorite pastries? I love this blueberry scone. That is one of my um, go-tos. Anybody else? Bonquet. Bonquet. Oh, I grew up. My grandma made that. My mom, uh, and wow, that's some good stuff. Now my mom makes almond butter cake, which is also a really good favorite of mine. <laughs> I could bring one. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have to. I'll have to twist my mom's arm for that one. <laughs> <laughs> and she may be coming, actually, for the second session. So she may come and embarrass me. I don't know if she's watching online now or not. But, uh, yeah, almond butter cake, bonquette, those mm, good Dutch treats. Um, anybody else have a favorite? Lemon poppy seed. Yeah, that's good stuff. Lemon poppy seed. Anybody get their favorite today? Was it available? You got the lemon poppy seed today? Awesome. Michelle got the lemon poppy seed today. <laughs> uh, my other one that I may or may not have set aside a, a piece to eat. Well, actually, I already ate it. Um, <laughs> you are welcome to have seconds, by the way. Um, or else I'm going to feel guilty because I already, this is my second. <laughs> my first one was a chocolate muffin with chocolate chips in it oh man help me <laughs> we got a downy woodpecker on number 10 any other favorites out there i try to top them off every day um but that doesn't mean that they need it every day they can go a weekend and and what runs out is on the ground and then if i leave the ground food depleted long enough those squirrels just get into trouble <laughs> so <laughs> um and number one goes pretty quick because that's just a light layer on the on the uh platform there yeah it has a filtration system so we're the question is about the the waterfall and we have a filtration system but we have cleaned it out and replaced the water too um, when it gets bad enough. And typically in the spring, after it's gone through the winter, it gets a little muckier. Um, especially after the fall, all the leaves come down and they get into the water and they, they taint the water a tea color, <laughs> all the tannins. So that's why you get that uh, kind of tea color. But yeah, we do have a filtration system that keeps it, uh, keeps it clean. And we have a few organic additives that we put in there, too, to help keep it clear. So with a system like this, you can't just press go and let it go. It does require some maintenance. So there's some filters that we clean out every once in a while. Well, we have a filtration system that we empty out. Under that, that oddly triangular, rectangular, excuse me, rectangular rock over there, that's a, that's a plastic rock. And there's an intake there with a net. And I, every day, will empty that net of leaves and, and other things, debris. So, and then it, it's pumped underneath and goes through a, through a, a, a infrared, uh, I think it's infrared, or uh, no, UV, I'm saying infrared, UV filtration system uh, as well. So, 
Tufted Titmouse getting a, a mealworm on number six. So let's see if there's other things that I was going to possibly talk about here. Here we go. I've got a few slides here. Snowy owls. I I always get the question of snowy owls, um, so I'll just put it out there. Snowy owl, we're having a bit of a, it feels like an invasion year. There's a lot of snowy owl sightings around, and they're here and then gone, um, so they're, they're moving around a lot right now. But there are sightings down to the south of us and everything, so um, I don't know why that video started. I did not mean for that video to start. Um, but look online if you want to have some guidelines on how to find and how to safely view snowy owls. I did that video last year, um, and you can find it online at our uh, birding website, miottawa.org slash birding, or just Google search Ottawa County birding, and it'll be either the first or the second one on the top there. Go to the videos, and you should be able to find that video, but uh, just make sure to keep a distance from them and respect the owl more than you respect your view of it or your ability to photograph it. That's my bottom line there. Um, but uh, they are tremendously beautiful birds. Um, and let's, let's keep them wild. Let's keep them safe. And let's also enjoy them, um, but enjoy them safely. So all my birds, they left. We got, yeah, we got the uh, Number nine, there's a couple of goldfinches, and that's about it. There, oh, there's a couple of three goldfinches on number four. I see a little rain falling out there. The wind died down. The wind did die down, yes. Let's see, i got a few other slides here, too. Are there any other questions? Oops. Sorry. I can go, go over this one, too. Um, and let me know, do you like this, having this available? I know before I've passed around books and things, and I thought, well, let's see if we can try to do a hybrid. You know how I had the slides online last year. I'm like, can we do that in person? And if that's a helpful thing, too, especially when there's no birds out here, you got to have something to look at, right? <laughs> I know this is one of the other popular questions is house finch, house finch versus purple finch. So we got house finch on the left, male and female, and then... Uh, uh, purple finch on the right, so you can see the difference. You had a, your your hand up. Oh yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yes, the the food goes into a crop where it's crushed, and the grit goes in there and helps to grind it up before it goes through the rest of its digestive system. Yes. Mhm. Mm Good question. Could there be a hawk or something out here that's chased all the birds out? I'm thinking maybe not. That, the birds are still moving. These, these birds, when the hawks are around, they have some Yeah, the question was, do you think maybe there's a hawk out there because the activity died down? But there are still birds moving through the branches. There's a red-breasted nuthatch on four. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe we're just in the ebb and flow or something happened out there and now it's Maybe the hawk flew on, and they're coming back in. But there is an ebb and flow to the bird feeders, and uh, we had we had uh, quite the flow going for a while. So this is a little bit more of an ebb. <laughs> any other any questions? Local bird sightings, things you want to share. Yeah. So the, the question is about safflower. Safflower seed is a white seed, about the same size as a sunflower seed, and squirrels don't tend to like it. So it is a good alternative to feeding sunflower seeds if squirrels have become a problem. Um, the, the note was that we don't have any out here. We haven't really had the need for it. I think there is a little bit of a decrease in desirability to the birds, safflower versus sunflower. So we've kept, oh, the tufted titmouse here, uh, they're attacking the feeders all of a sudden. We've got about four of them, th at least three, red-breasted nuthatch too. 
Yeah, look at them all on number one. They were on number five at the suet. They got a downy woodpecker on number 10 again. So now they're, they're coming back. Um, safflower is a good alternative if you are having uh, problems with the squirrels and cannot, cannot abate them. Um, so we, we have squirrels here, but we have generally been able to keep them at bay with other methods. So we have not put safflower feed out. But it is, all, it is a good uh, option to feed birds even if you don't have to keep the squirrels away. It still is a good seed, and, and uh, we just don't have any here. But yeah, yeah, safflower seeds are a good option to feed. I do mix mine with mealworms. Oh, okay. I seem to get a more of a variety that Okay, so the comment is that uh, she mixes it with uh, mealworms and gets a good variety that way. And that's maybe a good way to introduce mealworms to the birds, huh? Just mix it in with the other food, and then if they start finding it at the other place and figure out that it's something good. House finch on number four. I haven't even been using my binoculars yet. And a white-breasted nuthatch here on number five, going down to number one. They like to do that. They like to perch on number five before they go into number one. I noticed that. I think they're going into the suet, but then they don't. Yet we've got a male and a female house finch. So we got them up on the screen here. Compared to what you see on number four, that's a male and female house finch. Notice the streaking on the flanks on both the male and the female. Notice also the plain face on the female. It doesn't have any streaks above the eye like you can see on the female purple finch, where it's got that real dark cheek patch versus just a plain brown gray face. So... Purple finch, house finch, and it's also the, the male is more of a red color that's on the head and breast and on the rump, but it's not throughout the whole bird. If you look at the purple finch, that whole bird is purple. Um, the, the purple bleeds through the whole bird. So is that, you know, what are you seeing? I should have asked, what is the bird on number four, right? Which one of these? Quiz ya. But house finch is by far the more common of the two. Um, house finch, uh, they're actually not a native to Michigan, but they are not necessarily considered invasive. Some people might have a different opinion on that, but, uh, they arrived in the eighties, um, after being released in New York city, um, because of a U S fish and wildlife service raid on an illegal pet trade. Oh. It's the, it's true. And they released them out the back door and they have spread all across the United States. Oh. Yeah, so, um, yeah. and they arrived in the 80s. And I remember as a child, them starting to show up at our feeders. And my dad was like, what, is that a purple, are these purple finches? All of a sudden we got all these finches. And we figured out they were house finches, but we hadn't ever seen them before. So the context was like, is that a purple finch? You know, but no, they were house finches. Um, and, uh, yeah, but purple finches are native and they migrate and they can spend the winter here, but more than that, we typically see them in migration um, or in winter. Uh, they don't breed around here, they breed in Northern Michigan. Well, black cap chickadee. We're gonna wrap up here in the next few minutes uh, with our online and our first feeder viewing session here because I will need to transition um, into the other room. So are there any last questions, comments, things that you want to share while you have the opportunity? Sure. Yeah. Going back to the safflower, I switched to that as well because of squirrels. And then as I learned more about deer placement, I didn't have as much issue with squirrels. So I do have still the safflower out. I have a tray feeder that I put the sunflower seed in. Uh -huh. And the birds still seem to prefer the safflower. Oh. Well, there you go. Maybe it's all what you get used to, huh? <laughs> Comfort. And also, somebody had questioned, like, who eats the mealworms. I put those out, and I have chickadees and chipmunks and squirrels and squirrels. And I have them all. And that's a good point. So uh, we've got a comment here about the safflower seed. Um, Michelle fed safflower feed for a while, but then placed her feeders differently. Oh, red-bellied woodpecker on number 10. That's the female. And we've got downy and or, uh, two hairy woodpeckers at the back there, too. Nice of him to show up. Or her. That's the her. You can see the gray, the gray forehead. The males will have red all the way down the forehead. All the way to the beak. 
So now it's, she's showing it off, right? <laughs> yeah, see, right there, right here, right on the forehead. She's, she's the one with receding red hairline. <laughs> oh, went to number four. Look at that. Nice. All of a sudden, we're getting bombarded with birds. Sorry, Michelle. We, <laughs> I don't want to ignore your question. Um, the, the question was about safflower feed and that it was being fed to the birds and they got used to it because of squirrel problems. That was why she was using safflower. But then she changed the feeder arrangement and didn't need it anymore. However, the birds continue to go to safflower even when she's offering sunflower seeds. And so I said it's, it's maybe all what the birds get used to. And what was the other? Oh, the, the mealworms. She feeds the mealworms and she gets a wide variety of birds, including blue jays and blue birds. And, and I'm glad you mentioned bluebirds because that is one of the things that they will come into feeders for that they won't otherwise come to feeders for because they're more insectivorous they, and, and berries. They like berries and insects, whereas they don't eat seeds. So if you have bluebirds in your area, put out mealworms and that can potentially attract them. That was quite a nice flurry of activity. There's a tufted titmouse. You know, one, one that's absent so far is the cardinal. We have not seen a cardinal. Oh, you know, those of you online, you can't see this or hear this, but I mentioned that I hadn't seen a cardinal, and everybody in the room went, oh, yeah, yeah, he was over there. <sighs> you know, that's what happens when you have your back turned to the birds. But you know what? Before we go on and do the presentation and wrap up the online portion, I would like to document this if nobody has any uh opposition to, to this, or if, if you would rather not, you can, you can put your mask on. <laughs> if I could get a picture of the group of us here in the wildlife den, I think I can fit just about everybody on this. If I go, if I go way up, that is about right. You're going to need to lean in, Hank. <laughs> One, two, three. All right. Thank you. This has been a special treat to be with you here. Um, those of you in person, we are going to transition into, make sure to get a refill on your coffee, get another donut, and then go into the great room, and we're going to do our uh, tidbit presentation. Those of you online, um, I'm going to see if I can quick jump in and in the comments before we, uh, before we cut it, get you the link to the tidbits presentation which is, and I got to get to the end here. <laughs> and I get through, I've got all these slides just in case we need them. The tidbits presentation, which is going to be um, the birding stories, the stories behind the taking of the winning photos this year. I did five interviews and uh, with all of our five uh, winners and uh, the story behind each of those photos. So that is going to be posted online, and I'm also going to show it in person here in just a few minutes in the Nature Center. So um, we'll see if we can get that link put into the comments here in just a moment. Just be patient with us. Um, I feel like I'm missing. Oh, one other thing, the prizes. Everybody who has bought a Mug Club, uh, 2022 Mug Club membership has their name in a drawing. And at the end of our uh, tidbits presentation, which will not be online, um, I will be drawing a name. But if you're not here in person, we'll contact you uh, via email uh, to let you know that you won a prize. And the prize is, and I don't have it here, a little tube feeder, Audubon tube feeder, with a bag of seed from DeBrines. So um, if you are the lucky winner, we'll let you know. Um, but we're going to be doing that in person here and uh, after being online. So... I'm going to sign off here. I want to thank all of you for being here online to join us. Um, round of applause to the online folks, right? Thank you for, for attending. And thank you in-person people as well. And I will be seeing you in the other room here. Um, nice to have you all here for the program today. Hang on, online people. We'll, we'll get that uh, website to you momentarily. Can you...
Okay, we've got the uh, link in the in the comments. So here I am. I'm over here. We've got the link in the comments uh, to the tidbit presentation. So take a look at it. We thank you for joining us this month online, and uh, hope to see you again next month, January fifteenth. We'll be doing this same thing again. And again, we'd love to have some comments and some emails, some feedback on how to do this better. So. Thank you so much. Take care. Signing off on this end.